the next thing that I want to talk about for just a minute is the difference between nominal and real GDP. The key is that if you're actually trying to figure out you know, what you're really comparing over time, you have to use real GDP. For example, if we're trying to compare GDP in 1950 to GDP in the year 2000, well, of course the number is higher in the year 2000. Does that mean that we're actually producing a ton more stuff? We don't know. Because nominal means we're using today's numbers. Remember, nominal is like that little snapshot of what's happening at a given moment. We have to put them in the same terms. So for gross domestic product, we want to know what we're actually producing. If we're trying to get at the level of production, then we want to take a change in prices completely out of the equation. With CPI, we're looking at inflation. So we keep production constant. For GDP, we're looking at production. We keep prices constant. It's an easier way to do that. Otherwise, you're throwing too many variables into the mix, and you're not really getting the data that you want. So do we know if it's more stuff or if it's just more prices? We need to figure out what the commonality is with the terms. So how do you do that? There are different expressions for this in different textbooks, and the one that your book uses is a GDP deflator. So nominal GDP meaning today, divided by real GDP, if you know what that is, times 100 gives you the deflator, or other books call it a price index. Now, are you ever going to have to actually calculate a GDP deflator? Eh, probably not. But that's the equation. Now, if we play with this a little bit, you know, if we switch some of the terms back and forth, down here we have real GDP equals nominal divided by the price index or the GDP deflator. This is probably a more useful way to remember this equation. But what you've got to understand is that unless you put things in the same terms, we don't know exactly what we are measuring. Are we measuring an increase because of production, or are we measuring an increase in price? So let me go through this one more time. For CPI, we are measuring inflation. Therefore, we keep production constant. That's why you use the same market basket of goods for GDP. We want to measure production and if I'm using logical symbols therefore you keep price constant and that's why you have to adjust for inflation now both of these measures here, if we're talking about CPI and GDP, and for those of you who don't like logic symbols, I'll just make them the same. Um, we use both these calculations because we're getting at different data. For CPI, we want to see what are the changes in consumer prices over time because inflation can be very damaging to an economy. We want to try to make adjustments for that. It helps us with policy decisions. For GDP, we want to know what's happening with the level of national production. Because again, if we have a drop in national production for something like high unemployment, which is running rampant today, um, then we want to take the prices out of the equation. So for CPI, you're measuring inflation, so you keep the production constant. GDP, you're measuring production, so you want to keep prices constant. Does 
a big difference between those two things.